Hey, Monday morning, Dominic Steele, Daily Bible Time. Thanks for joining us. I want to begin by putting a question today. As an adult, who do you look to for advice, for instruction on different kinds of topics? And what sort of advice do you find yourself needing? And who do you look to advice from? And conversely, whose advice on various subjects do you deliberately avoid? I mean, I think for myself, a little while ago, I asked a friend to come around to our house and to give advice to me on an electrical subject the house it had needed to be electrically rewired and I couldn't work out if the quotes we'd received were in the right ballpark or not now what about as a Christian thinking about theological topics and life topics whose advice should a Christian listen to and why we are back in Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church and last time the apostle was working with the Corinthian church on the subject of wisdom and Paul was saying that the Corinthian Christians had wrongly understood what wisdom was and so 1 Corinthians chapter 1 sentence 17 Christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel not with words of human wisdom lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to us who are being saved it is the power of God and so to refresh your memory Paul is arguing against a group of clever public speakers who've been traveling around who'd eventually come into Corinth and uh, these people had wise and clever rhetoric but Paul says I'm not about wise and clever rhetoric I'm about a message with particular content Paul is delivering what they might describe as a foolish message. A foolish message, the way God saves, is through a crucified Messiah. Now, I had a private conversation with somebody and he asked me, why is your church doing so well? And and I said, oh, well, I think there are spiritual reasons and there are sociological reasons. He, he listened carefully as I explained them, but... I just don't think he got it. I think he thought it was interesting, peculiar, but 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 I, I don't think he could understand, as I said, that the key reason I thought that our church had grown is because we're speaking about a man who was crucified all the time. But you look at sentence 18 of chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, the message of the cross, it looks like foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the very power of God. I remember planning a mission weekend. I remember the big goal of the weekend was training and that every event we were thinking we want to have measurable goals and were the guests present? Was the atmosphere conducive? Was the gospel preached? Uh, Did we speak the message of the cross? And, And was the gospel preached in such categories that the guest present would understand? And and I was thinking, yeah, we need to be training up speaking in the message of the cross and so in our community groups and I was hoping that everybody would be practicing speaking the message of the cross and 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 actually if you look at chapter 2 verses 1 to 5 when I came to you brothers I didn't come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified I came to you in weakness and fear with much trembling My message and my preaching were not without wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. Now, some Christian leaders have said from these verses that Paul was a poor, dull, uninteresting speaker, and they use these verses to justify their poor, dull, uninteresting speaking. But I think in Christian ministry, what is not optional is speaking about the cross. I mean, boring, optional. But what is not optional is that the content of your ministry be about the cross. In the book of Acts, chapter 14, sentence 13, the pagans link Paul with Hermas, the Greek god of communication. I take it because Paul, the chief speaker, was actually a good communicator. And in Acts chapter 17, verse 2, Luke writes that Paul spent hours reasoning, proving, explaining in public debate. So I don't think Paul is arguing in 1 Corinthians that he's a useless speaker. But I think Paul is saying that when he speaks of the cross, his aim is not that people would be dazzled by his eloquence or his rhetoric. He doesn't want people to say, what a marvellous preacher. 
Rather, his aim is that people would say, what a great saviour. And he wanted this so that, verse 5, your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. He didn't want people trusting in his great abilities of rhetoric. He wanted people to trust in the cross of Christ. Let me lead us in prayer. Father God, we pray that as we speak of Jesus to our friends in personal conversation, to our family members, to those we love, you'd help us to be speaking of the blood, to be speaking of the cross, to be holding out this great message. And we pray that as we do this, people's faith might not rest on our eloquence or our wisdom or our rhetoric, but on the great work of Christ's death for them. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey friend, if you prayed with me, then do click like on this post or write Amen in the comments below and I'll look forward to your company for Daily Bible Time Tuesday morning, tomorrow morning. Thanks for being with us.